Good afternoon, Americanists. Um, I hope you're all feeling accomplished or at least relieved after the midterms. I'm recording this video lecture for you because I just want to check in with you before you get started on the Grapes of Wrath. Um, some things to know going in. Um, Steinbeck publishes the Grapes of Wrath in 1939. Um, this is a story of one family of sharecroppers, farmers who don't own their land, just like you saw in Cain, who are displaced by the Dust Bowl, the Depression, and the mechanization of agriculture, and the story of their travels from Oklahoma to California to try and make a new life there. Um, I mentioned these historical contexts, and I want to give you some dates for them. Um, notice that Steinbeck publishes The Grapes of Wrath in 1939, um, the Dust Bowl was something that afflicts the prairie states during the 1930s, but especially 34 and 36. And the Great Depression, of course, runs from the stock market crash in 1929 to 1940-ish, um, when unemployment finally dips below 15% again. Um, so when Steinbeck publishes this, this is not old history. It's still very much going on. The people who are displaced by the Dust Bowl are still sort of rattling around California, displaced. Um, I'd like to now give you a counter-argument and an argument that I hope will enliven your reading of this text. The counter-argument um, comes from my former days as a high school teacher. Um, I have a box full of teaching materials that say things like this. The Grapes of Wrath is about the triumph of the human spirit, or The Grapes of Wrath is about the importance of family. Um, and what I'd like to say to you is that you guys are the generation of the environmental crisis and the generation of the foreclosure crisis. You are too smart to read this text this way. I submit to you, The Grapes of Wrath is an intensely political novel. Pour this in your ears from page 33, and then just let someone try and tell you that this is a story about the triumph of the human spirit. This is um, a kind of imagined conversation between uh, an agent for a bank and the farmer as he's about to kick off of their land. The agent says, we're sorry, it's not us, it's the monster. The bank isn't like a man. Yes, but the bank is only made of men. No, you're quite wrong there. The bank is something else than men. It happens that every man in a bank hates what the bank does, and yet the bank does it. The bank is something more than men, I tell you. It's the monster. Men made it, but they can't control it. Um, so, I'd like to read The Grapes of Wrath in this class as a political novel. I think it'll work. Passages like that make me think it'll work. So, as you're reading, be thinking about what are this novel's politics? What is it criticizing? What does it want to teach me about America? And, in terms of thinking about how it does that teaching, my next a little recipe for the Grapes of Wrath. Um, one part of what you're going to see is a realistic third-person narration of the story of the Jode family and their travels. But there are whole chapters that are not that. In fact, there are half of the chapters you're going to read for Monday are not that. You'll also see lyrical descriptions of the land, nature, animals, You'll also see really overt moments of political lessons, like the ones I just read you about the bank being a monster. Um, so as you're reading, um, I'd love for you to be thinking about what would you add to this recipe? What are the other things that this book is made of, in addition to this story of the Jode family? Um, what are the political aims of this book? And how does each piece, each piece of Steinbeck's style in this recipe, serve those political aims. And I think that this last idea, thinking about how these little pieces serve a political aim, is going to help you turn what might sometimes be confusion or annoyance into really strong critical thinking as you're reading along going, why did I just spend an entire chapter reading about a turtle? Um, so that's what we've got, 10 chapters for Monday. Um, good luck with it, and have a great weekend.